The Fraser has hurtled out of the mountain passes and overflowed its banks to cover thousands of acres of rich land in one of the most beautiful valleys in the world with the muddy waters of disaster. A new and terrible kind of desert suddenly appears, a desert of water. Only the trees and the tops of barns and houses still hold their heads above the flood. From the black Wednesday that the Agassiz dikes broke, the tragic story moved with breathtaking speed toward its terrible climax. Community after community wavered and fell before the onslaught of the river. Every 24 hours brought fresh reports of disaster. Crops disappeared under the muddy waters. Valuable equipment and homes built by years of effort were swallowed up in the ever-widening Fraser. The last week of May 1948 will be remembered by the people of the Fraser Valley as a week of brutal tragedy. For miles, there were no longer the neat fields and fences, the pleasant farms and pastures and country roads, but only a waste of dirty water dotted with the rooftops of barns and houses. Whole communities were isolated and others engulfed by water. And all the time, the Fraser moved on relentlessly, rising each day as the melting snows poured their enormous weight into its headwaters. By now, the flood was recognized as a major disaster and began its long sojourn on the front pages of the newspapers. And by now, too, the full facilities of the Canadian Red Cross had swung into the battle. With the willing assistance of transportation companies and private individuals, the mass evacuations of flooded areas began. In some cases, evacuation by normal means was impossible, and the Army duck went back on active service, this time on a mission of mercy. One of the farmers' greatest worries was for the safety of their livestock. Valuable sheep, in many cases, had to be taken to safe ground in rowboats. Each sheep had to be carried to shore, where they waited trussed up and panting in animal terror. Cows are one of the most important assets in the Fraser Valley. Many of them, marooned on high ground, were badly in need of milking. Every truck that could be pressed into service was utilized in an effort to rescue these animals. On Friday, May the 28th, the provincial government authorized the use of troops to aid in evacuation. Sailors became familiar and welcome sights to valley residents cut off by the floodwaters. Many communities found their streets turned into rivers and their houses into islands. Gone were the gardens hidden behind picket fences. Now, only the picket fences peered mournfully over the scene of desolation. <laughs> 